Alright, I've briefly talked about acids before, but now let's figure out what makes an acid a strong acid or a weak acid. There are two ways to determine the value of an acid. A high Ka is going to mean that you're going to have a stronger acid, and inversely, a pKa, the negative log of the Ka, the lower the pKa, the stronger the acid. So first, look at what unit you're going to work with. Are you going to determine the pKa or the Ka? A lower pKa indicates a stronger acid. There are four different ways to determine the acid strength, four factors that play into it. You have periodic trends, induction, resonance, and lastly, hybridization. And I will talk about each of these briefly. First, let's look at periodic trends. Now, to illustrate this, I'm going to give you two different examples. I've seen that before. And we've seen that before. Which of these is going to be a stronger acid? Well, I'm not going to give you the pKa values yet. I will at the very end, but not right now. So right now, let's look at fluorine. When this loses its hydrogen, because it's an acid, it's going to donate this hydrogen. What's going to be left is you're going to have a fluorine with a negative charge on it because these electrons get donated to the fluorine. This fluorine is very stable with the negative charge because it's the most electronegative. These electrons, the extra electrons, are going to be close to the nucleus and the positive nucleus and the negative electrons are going to want each other. So with this fluorine being the most electronegative element, it's going to be very stable with this negative charge. So the conjugate base, I said before, this is going to be the acid. This is going to be the conjugate base. So, if you have a stable conjugate base, it's going to be more acidic. Now let's look at over here. Carbon is not as electronegative as this fluorine. So, when you lose a hydrogen, you're going to have a negative charge. You're going to have a pair of electrons in that carbon. Carbon is not as electronegative. It's not as comfortable with this pair of electrons, making it a less stable conjugate base. This is going to be the conjugate base. This is going to be the acid. This is the conjugate base of the acid. So this conjugate base is not going to be as stable as, let's say, a more electronegative fluorine is going to be. Less stable is equal to less acidic. This molecule is less acidic than this molecule. Even though they're both acids, I'm going to give you the values. Now, this acid is going to have about a 3.2 pKa. What does that mean? A lower pKa is stronger. This one, pKa is about 50 or so. So, a higher pKa, it's going to be a weaker acid. That makes sense. Well, now let's look at down a column. So, I don't have a periodic table next to me, but what does it mean when we go down a column? So, instead of fluorine, let's do fluorine versus um, iodine. That's a good example. Which of these is going to be the stronger acid? Well, in my example over here, across a row, the fluorine is the more electronegative, meaning that it's going to want the electrons more than the carbon will. Well, that only works with rho. Now that we're talking about down a column, which is going to be the stronger acid? The pKa for this, like I said, is 3.2. The pKa for this, negative 10. This is by far the stronger acid. Now, to do this, it's not about electronegativity when you're dealing with a column. Now you're more dealing with size. Here's my fluorine, negative. Once it's lost its hydrogen, 
Here's just a graphical representation of my fluorine, my conjugate base. The size of it is pretty small because you only have a certain number of protons and you only have one uh, orbit of electrons. Once we get to iodine, here's, let's just say my base nucleus, here's going to be my molecule. I guess I should draw this a little bigger. My nucleus is going to be a lot bigger than my fluorine is. If that's my nucleus and that the outer one is my electron shell, here's my nucleus, here's my electron shell. This one is going to be more electrons, which means more stable in accepting another. Well, what do I mean by this? Well, like I said, to be a strong acid, you have to have the more stable conjugate base. And in this case, fluorine is more able to accept this negative charge. Well, both of these are in the same column. This fluorine only has a certain number of electrons. And it's not very many, nor does it have a lot of protons, but that doesn't really matter. It only has a certain number of electrons. Over here, iodine has a lot more electrons. Over here, let's say let's throw this extra electron that we just gained from our bond. Let's throw that into the picture. Well, it doesn't have very much space. The electron density is pretty concentrated around that nucleus. So this electron is going to have a harder time fitting in to the electron density over here. Well, given the same example, let's add this extra electron here. It's going to have a lot of places. It's going to more readily accept the charge. This iodine right here, the conjugate base, is going to have a larger electron density, meaning that it's going to have an easier time accepting this extra electron, which makes it a more stable conjugate base. Now, that's going to be what I mean by periodic trends. Now let's look at induction. Induction is going to be, I guess I might as well do an example. Um, let's draw another molecule that looks pretty similar, but is slightly different. Um, which of these, this is going to be the acidic hydrogen, this is going to be the acidic hydrogen that's going to pop off. Now, which of these is going to be the stronger acid? Well, let me draw the bond polarity between all of these. Between here, you're going to have these electrons, bromine's the more electronegative molecule between carbon and bromine. The electrons are going to be over here. Same with over here. Electrons are going to go towards the bromines all the way around. You're going to have a positive charge on this carbon, a slightly positive charge. Well, once this hydrogen pops off, you're going to be left with a negative charge on the oxygen. So let's pretend that's gone. You're going to have a negative charge on the oxygen. Well, you're going to have a slightly positive charge here, and let's draw it over here as well. Non-polar, non because the electronegativity between hydrogen and carbon are about the same, so there's going to be no charge. Once this pops off, you're going to have the negative charge, because you're going to have an extra pair of electrons, an extra electron on this oxygen. Induction means that as you go across a single bond, this extra electron can be pulled towards the positive charge of the carbon, making it a little closer to the molecule, meaning that it can just spread out in the electron density. Now, electron density can't really be drawn pictorially very well. But there's a whole bunch of electrons swimming all in this molecule. As you have a slight positive charge here, this extra electron can be sucked into the electron density over here. A slightly positive charge, it can be spread to. Over here, there's not very many electrons. And even so, there's no 
there's no polar polarity in this. Because these are nonpolar bonds, electrons are going to be equally shared between these. This, this negative charge is going to have a harder time fitting in. So what induction is, electronegativity pulls the electron density across a molecule to stabilize the conjugate base. This is our conjugate base with the hydrogen popped off. This is the conjugate base. This negative charge, this extra electron, can be pulled towards the electron density across this molecule, making it more stable. Over here, our conjugate base with the hydrogen popped off. This extra electron, the negative charge, can't really be pulled across because you have nonpolar bonds. The more polar bonds that you get, this negative charge can be split across the electron density of the molecule. Now let's go on to resonance. Resonance, we've seen before, however, I'm going to draw out a couple molecules. I'm just going to imagine that our hydrogen's already popped off. If there's a hydrogen here, that would be our acid. Now let's draw same case. Our hydrogen's already been popped off. These are the conjugate bases that I've drawn with the hydrogen already gone, giving it a negative charge on both oxygens. Now, this can be drawn another way. This can also be drawn like this. This is a resonance structure. These are both resonance structures. The, pot, the negative charge can be either split on this oxygen or this oxygen. Either way drawn is acceptable. So let me just do a little bit of extra practice. Here is our negative charge. Here is a hybridization, a resonance hybrid of these two resonance structures. Our resonance hybrid has a negative charge on both oxygens split equally. This is the more accurate picture. So, which of these is going to be the more strong, the more stable conjugate base? Well, it's kind of obvious. When you have a resonance structure like I've drawn, over here there is no resonance structure. The negative charge cannot be stabilized as well because the oxygen is the only molecule, the only element in this molecule that can hold this negative charge. Over here, you have two molecules that can hold, the two elements that can hold the negative charge in the molecule. One, two. So over here, the negative charge is said to be, is delocalized to both oxygens. So this conjugate base is a little bit more stable than this. Well, when you have a more stable conjugate base, it's going to be more easy to rip that hydrogen off. This base, this conjugate base is going to be more stable, so this hydrogen can pop off a little bit easier, making it a stronger acid. So resonance, if you have a resonance structure, it'll have a little bit stronger acid. Finally, you have hybridization. Now, let me draw. And you also have these. Which of these is a stronger acid? Well, once you pop that hydrogen off, you're going to have the same molecule. Okay, I just circled the negative charge so you can see it. And then you're going to have the same molecule, CH2. These are both large electrons. And the negative charge is going to be on the carbon. So this is what you're left. Once this hydrogen pops off, once this hydrogen pops off, because they're acids, you're going to be left with the conjugate bases. Okay, 
Hopefully you're getting used to this. Once the hydrogen pops off, you're going to be left with a, a conjugate base. Which of these is more stable? Well, let's look at hybridization. This, like I've said earlier, is going to have one group. These electrons are going to count as one group. That's going to be another group. A triple bond doesn't matter. The carbon does. So you're going to have one group, two groups. You're going to have two groups on that. I said earlier that when you have two groups, it's going to be an sp hybridized atom. So this carbon is going to be sp hybridized. Let's look at this carbon. It has a pair of electrons and two hydrogens attached to it. So that's actually going to have, well, and it's also going to be attached to the CH2 over here, which is going to be attached to the CH3. It's going to have four groups attached to it. A pair of electrons, two hydrogens, and this carbon over here. So four groups attached to it. When you have four groups attached, you're going to have sp3 hybridization. Now what does all this mean? We're talking about acids. I kind of got off tangent, but not really. Because when you have more s character, which this one does, the lone pair of electrons is going to be closer to the nucleus. Like I said before, when you have more s character, these electrons are going to want to be a little bit closer to the nucleus. So, when you have electrons that are a little bit closer to the positive charge, it's going to be more stable. So, S character equals stronger conjugate base. There we go. Stronger S character, a little bit weaker S character, 25% versus 50. When you have a stronger S character, the electrons are going to want to be a little bit closer to the nucleus of this carbon, meaning that the positive and the negative charge are closer, because opposites attract. When you have that, you're going to have a stronger conjugate base. And over here, um, let's just draw out, you're going to have 25% S character, meaning that these electrons are going to be a little bit further. And the electrons that are shared between the covalent bonds between these hydrogens and this carbon are going to be a little bit further away from the nucleus of that carbon. So, in this case, the conjugate base, what we're talking about there and there, we're going to have a stronger conjugate base because the electrons are going to be a little bit closer to the nucleus, over here, further away, more stable, and the takeaway message is, the more stable the conjugate base, the more acidic it's going to be. In this case, that will be the more acidic molecule.